Hello everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how to install a custom firmware on any PSP. Uh, the latest firmware version as of recording this was 6.60, so that is what I'm going to assume that you have. If you don't have it, then there are plenty of tutorials on how to install a firmware on the PSP. So you can just update your PSP to 6.60 and then continue with this tutorial. Uh, so this is going to be the first part of the tutorial. The second part of the tutorial is optional. This first part will show you how to install a light custom firmware on your PSP, which will allow you to do all the same things that a regular custom firmware does, which is load homebrew and downloaded games and all that fun stuff. But the uh, limitation of a light custom firmware is that every time you completely power down your PSP, not just put it to sleep, but completely power it down and then turn it back on, then you'll have to uh, run a small app on the PSP which will get the custom firmware back. Um, so that's what this tutorial is going to look at. At the end of this tutorial I'll have a link or annotation to another one which will show you how to get a permanent custom firmware on your PSP but that's another tutorial so right now we'll just look at the light custom firmware um, so the first thing you're gonna do is open up your web browser all of these links will be in the description so you're gonna get pro custom firmware just go to the download and get the latest version as of recording this it was pro-b10.fix1 just click on that and download the file and then you're also going to get PSP ident which is not required if you're just getting if you're just planning on using a light custom firmware but you'll need this program if you want to install a permanent custom firmware so that you can check what motherboard your PSP has and see what you have to do and so on so I would recommend getting it if you want to and look at permanent custom firmwares just download that and then open up that folder and uh, now you can plug in your PSP. Let me just do that. There we go. Open up the folder or memory card. Um, and yours might not have all the same folders that mine does, but it doesn't really matter. All you need is the PSP folder and inside that a game folder. So uh, open up the Pro-B10, you'll need WinRAR, 7-Zip, whatever to open it, and select these three folders. Um, you actually don't need the SDK. Select SE Plugins and PSP, and copy that over to your PSP, or memory stick. Uh, merge folders, if it asks you. And that's the Pro-B10 on the memory card, or PSP. And then if you got PSP ident, then just open up that zip file, and then on your PSP, go to PSP and game, and copy the PSP ident folder over to the PSP game folder. So uh, that's everything that you need to do on the computer. So now let's go over to the PSP. Sorry, there's one thing that I forgot to mention. Um, on your memory card, uh, on the root of the memory card, so in the same place that the PSP folder is. you, uh, If you have downloaded some games, then you should create a folder called ISO, just like that, and then put all the games that you've downloaded in there. That is where the custom firmware will look for um, downloaded games. So as you can see, I have these games on my PSP right now. So uh, yeah, that's all that I wanted to say. On to the PSP. Alright, so we are on the PSP now. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is go over to Game, and go to the System Storage, or Memory Card, or whatever, depending on your PSP, and you should have at least these four things. The uh, CIPL Flasher, 6.60 Pro B Fast Recovery, and the Update, and if you got it, PSP Ident, so I guess you'll at least have these three, the Pro ones. So uh, to install the light custom firmware, you're going to go to Pro Update, click on that, and it should start up on the PSP. 
and it will take a little while to load. Once it has loaded, you'll get these, uh, this. So it's going to say press, well, you can see it on the screen, press X to launch CFW, press hold, hold L to reinstall, press triangle to uninstall, and press R to exit. So we're going to do X to launch it. It's going to write all the files, and then you hit X again to start. And it's going to look like the uh, PSP startup screen there. And now you should have a custom firmware. Try hitting select. And if you get that menu, then you do in fact have the custom firmware started up. Uh, you can hit select again to get out of that. And you'll notice earlier I showed you that I had some games. So uh, if I go into my system storage, those games should now show up. And here they are. I can start those and do whatever. Just, uh, they start, they don't say they're corrupt or anything, so uh, yeah, you've installed a light custom firmware onto your PSP. Once this starts up, I'm just going to quit and show you a little bit more. Um, I'll show you what I meant earlier by light custom firmware and how you can't turn it off without removing the firmware, so uh, you see if I just flip the switch, then the PSP is asleep. Oh, what that light turns off. The PSP is asleep. I can turn it back on, and I will still have the uh, custom firmware. However, if I hold that to completely turn off the PSP, so that light goes out, and then turn it back on. Turn it back on. Then. Uh, I'm no longer going to have that custom firmware. As you can see, I can, once this starts up, I can hit select. It doesn't do anything. So to get that back, I just go into system storage, and I just start up this fast recovery program. You don't need to do the update again, you just go fast recovery. That'll start up and it should just kick you back to the uh, PSP menu, but you will have the custom firmware back. There we go. And as you can see, when I hit select, that now shows up. I have my games on my memory stick showing up. And uh, so yeah, I hope that you could follow this tutorial. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. Uh, you can just delete the update file once you're done with it. Uh, all that you need is the fast recovery, and we will look at the other two things in the permanent custom firmware tutorial, which there will be an annotation right, right in the video right now, right, right there, somewhere. So uh, click on that if you want a permanent custom firmware. If you don't, then have fun, and I hope that I helped.